No. Are you getting Hey, huh? Yeah, I went got it. No, one day I did. I went got it. It was, but I don't think it's no more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my other I hope I'm fall asleep. Took me a motion. Oh, okay. I don't know if that bitch kept the door open or unlocked the door. I don't know. I can't remember. All right, here we are again. Uh, 
Okay, remember, next uh, Thursday is, uh, we're off for Easter. Okay, let me share. My screen. All right, so next, 328 is holiday, Easter Thursday, whatever we call it. And that's the extent of our spring break. Now, uh, Tuesday, it'll be an open review day. I'll try to come up with something for us to do, but I'm going to finish up. tonight the chapter okay so uh next week bring any questions you got on tuesday i'll be glad to go through it i mean from start to finish both sex uh, classes if you're in both so bring any questions you got i don't mind going through things and uh after easter we're gonna have We're going to have a one-day review, again, a work day. You have your, uh, I think your, uh, the review opens on this day. And then it'll still be open here on the second. And it'll be open right up until class time. And what this is going to be is a Zoom test. I want to be able to watch it. Not that I, uh suspect anything i just uh had heard about zoom tests and i actually uh like it i like uh i think that really would work better than the uh, respondus but the respondus is what the i have to do for the midterm and the final anyway like i said i think i like the zoom test to me I, it's all i need to see is people's faces and eyes and stuff all right, does, any, does anybody have any questions before we uh, get turns started? It must be certain classes that do respond to us because I know a couple of my other classes on um, midterms, we did Zoom testing. Yeah, well, like I said, it depends on the department. Our department, the STEM department, which is science and math, they ask for respondents on the midterm and the finals. Mm -hmm. If you got one, like I said, I don't, I don't know how chemistry works or how uh, biology works because I don't teach those. But I do know that for the math, they ask us to do the respondents and look at the videos, and uh, you know because. The respondent makes a note if you're doing anything strange. You're supposed to have your camera on and looking at you, and you're supposed to hold up your, you know, your ID and stuff. So I, you know, but that's what we're supposed to use for midterm and, and final. Yeah, biology does it because I'm in a biology class and it does it. Yeah, and that's this that's under science and math. So yeah, STEM. So yeah, they would do it there. But that'll be during class, okay, that one. Like for the exam, since that's on Respondus, I can open it up for uh, different times. You know, like I might do it from uh, starting early in the 5.30 time and keep it till uh, – well, actually, you know, for the for the exam, we're, we're already uh, off of class time, so there'll be an exam time. Most probably what it'll be is it'll be 6 to 8. So make plans for it, okay? Because I don't what really control this. What are you talking about? I'm sorry. See that right there? Yeah, me, me first. Right. Okay. That's the day that everybody tests on for our class. We're going to have, uh, in the O2O, the exam will be a couple of weeks earlier, and that class will be over with as far as, um, you know, grades are concerned. And then we'll use the last uh uh, days in the O2O to concentrate on this class. Okay, so when exactly last day of class, May 1st? 
Because if no, not, I have the a last day of class, me. the last day of class is right here. April oh, 25th. In my face. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God, it's almost over. See, notice that, okay, this class meets on Tuesday and Thursday, but notice by the exam schedule. It's a Wednesday, so just remember, that's uh, something that students have a hard time getting used to because they think, well, how can I have a class on, how can I have the exam on Wednesday when the class meets on Tuesday and Thursday? It's because after the 25th, there are no more classes on regular days, and we go to the exam schedule. And what's the highest grade you need to pass this class? Uh, you mean the lowest grade? I meant they had a lowest grade. Well, you want to make sure I've you seen. have a seven a seventy overall. Okay. Now let me just mention this. All right. Because I'm sure people are concerned about this. So I just want to make sure this is straight. You've got plenty of grades left if you're like in the sixties, okay, to bring your grade up. But if you uh if you didn't pass the midterm, in other words, uh, uh, you mean below 70, then you're going to need to have a, a bump up on the final exam to bring that midterm up generally, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can't drop both the midterm and the final. So in theory, you could have a 70 on the midterm and the 70 on the final, and as long as all your other stuff was passing, you'd pass. But if you have a low grade on the midterm, then you got to have something to offset that low grade for the final exam. But my strategy is pretty simple. If you're struggling, like I said, in the 60s and even a little bit below that, the Chapter 10 test is the test to come. This test here is the one to come alive on. You're going to have that review for it that's going to be out there. You can work it until the cows come home, until you're sick of it. But if you do well on that test, that's going to give you a lot of confidence because this is a, not an easy test. This material, the reason why we broke it up is because, you know, we don't want to have too much on it. But this is still going to have all this stuff we discussed so far from 10.4 to 10.7 on that test. But that will give you confidence to jump in and do well on the rest of the tests. Isn't that test only 5%? Yeah, it's only 5%. That's correct. But I would just say this. If you do well on that, let's say you make a high B on that test, then that's going to give you a lot of confidence because that material is going to be on the final exam. And then you're going to have this test. All right, that's going to be a take-home one. It's not going to be over any particular time. It won't be Zoom. It won't be a, a respondus. And then the last test is on Chapter 11, which we will start covering after we have this test, after the drop date, essentially. And so that's three more tests. I will drop one of those test grades, but you got to remember the midterm and the final don't get dropped. The department, the department wants to make sure I'm not just, you know, an easy grader on my test. So that's why you've got to have pass an average on both the midterm and the final together. That's just the way it works. The department, that's the department's 60%. The midterm is 25. The final exam is 35%. And then all of my tests are 25%. So that gives you 85% based upon the tests in the class, the tests, five tests in the exam. The other 15% is the, uh, the final exam. Is that correct? 5% of it is the, uh, actually, I should say here, um, test preps. Because they're not coded as quizzes right now. They're coded as, as, as tests. But that's the ones that prepare you for my tests and the midterm and final. And then all that learning path, that's only 10%. But 85%, my test, the midterm, and the final, 
or 85 percent of the grade so the 120 is primarily based upon test grade so that's something we got to get used to all right yeah. i know it's a hard the, the hard line to follow but that's the department in the one it's cent hard, Mr. Cruz. yeah Can we gonna drop it before the finals the last the, the last the lowest score I'm even know what I'm looking yeah, at. Yeah, as we get in after the uh after the last test, after this is done, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna make sure all the grades are taken care of. We'll make sure it gets dropped. I'll drop a few of the uh uh the uh, learning path grades, I'll drop a couple of the uh test prep grades, and then I'll drop one of the test grades. You know what? I think I like you after all. Well, <laughs> that'll help you with that. Like I said, it is, but you got to realize the midterm no. and the final are not optional to pass, okay? But what just because. I'm oh, sorry, Kanine. I apologize. That was rude. All right. But just like I said, it is um, the midterm and the final have to be 70 or above. And provided that all the other stuff is above 70, you will skate by. So what were you going to say, Felicia? Wait on next test. That one gave me a headache. I just went blank. Okay. Right here. 4-4. Four, 4-4. Four. Four, four. Oh, that's the one. That's, that's two weeks. That's like two weeks. Yeah, that's I the hard test. I got two weeks to prepare. I got two weeks to get this. You'll get it. <laughs> I've seen your work. You're going to get it. Mr. Cruz, I have a question. What's How up? Many for final. We don't know. I mean, it's everything, and it's going to be a two-hour one, so it'll be big, you know, bigger than, and it's usually about thirty problems, but you get two hours, twenty-five to thirty, kind of thing. How about fifteen? <laughs> well, all of the mine, since they're in an hour and fifteen minutes, are about that, about fifteen problems. But um, since we're getting two, like I said, I think they generally add 10 or 11, something like that more. Because it won't be more than 30 and it won't be uh, less than 25. Something like that is usually what it is. For final? Yeah, final exam. Because it's a two-hour exam. So it'll be, uh, you know, proportionally longer. And you'll have a review for it, so. Oh, well, the What's that? That what? last we did, or oh, the midterm, mm -hmm. I done review and kind of done really good. Well, it was real decent on a review. <laughs> then I get to the test, and it was not what I thought I would have made. It was well, because it's like it switch up, it switch up when you. You know, then I'll just it, tell you, you this in general. Switch. You will never know exactly what's going to be on there. What that review is, it's a review of everything, more or less. And, you know, with mine, with my tests, I try to make them more or less the same. Sometimes I make them a little shorter when we have the test. But, you know, you're never going to have exactly. So that's why you're going over more on the review than you would actually have on the test. I'll try to work with you and help you but make sure you got questions okay if you got anything on the review when we get there bring it up and i'll give you as many pointers as i can on how to deal with things okay and i got another question mm -hmm. so these dates that's on this uh on this list right here for like the the real the um what the damn things called the what are you looking at the sections like the section like chapter ten point two two point ten point three yeah so chapter uh the, the, the test is coming out no ten point four to ten listen those mm -hmm. days are different than what I'm saying on here than it is on Canvas so 
those different. Those well, these different. this is the official calendar here. So I don't, so I if there's something it. different on there, I will fix it before. But this is the official calendar. That's why I always, you know, when I go over this at the beginning cool. of the class and I, I go over it at the beginning of the class. But uh, you got to realize, first of all, Canvas is crazy because it's syncing updates. And I may have the wrong date on there when I set it up. I, I'm just trying what, to, what was, to go about What was different? Because, uh, the section dates, like some of the dates are different because like if you do it after the date, you don't get your points for it versus if you do it before. Okay, you're date. talking about the learning path. Yeah. Okay, it's let me explain one more time how the word learning path works. So you say okay. it's not worth points, but I want every point. Okay, well, this is how you get every point. If you finish before that due date for that section in the learning path, and you get everything right, it's going to be 100. But here's the bad news. Because Alex is going to test you to see if you really know that stuff so it could bring in the um, knowledge check. And if you miss it there, then it will go back and, uh, and deduct from your score there then. Okay? But again, nothing ever disappears from your learning path until you master it consistently. You know how when you answer a problem, if you get three in a row, it bumps you ahead? Whereas if you miss some, you're going to have to do it more? That's yeah. the way it works. The whole okay. system is based like that. So it doesn't let you forget it just because you got it in the beginning. It's going to keep testing you. I need to but keep testing me up on this chapter we own. What I'm saying, yeah. that's, that's this is this Go so ahead. Uh, yeah, if 10.8 is due tomorrow, and I and they say the due date is due today, I mean tomorrow on this list that you're showing versus in Canvas, it's it's saying that it's due March 30. Okay. In Alex, what does it say? Let me go to it. Let me go ahead and look, because like I said, I do not go by what's in Canvas, because Canvas screws things up. So you go by this. This is what I suggest doing is within two days of coverage. That's why I put this up here. Work on your path and try to get it done. So by like Monday, this should be done in theory now. What so is the data? Oh my gosh, I'm behind. You That's say what I'm yeah, saying. because we're working on it now. You're not on behind yet. If you're, but let me see. Let me see what uh, data it's got in here. Like I said, this is Alex, is what's important. So 10.6 is due by Sunday. 324, you are correct. That's what we covered Sunday. last. That's what we covered last week, last uh, one week ago. 10.7 is 327. And then this tonight will be at the end of the month. But it's good. So, you got to catch up. You got to catch up. Uh, the, like for everything you miss, they have a catch up date, right? Yeah, so, well, they do. Like I'm saying, is you never lose anything, even if you miss those dates. But this is what I suggest within two days of coverage in class, have it done, and then that'll work out better for you. So do you right. have 10.6 on here? Is due on Sunday? Well, if you said that date is, I mean, what is it? What no, what do you have on your paper? On the other on Well, other on my paper? on this paper? Yeah. What what is Well, it when did we cover we covered it on the 13th, on the 14th, so it should have been done on the, by the 16th, according to my rules, okay? So you see what I'm saying? It should have, so it's on behind because it's saying 314 or I'm where I need to be because it's saying Sunday. Yeah, you're what you because like I said, Alex will give you more leeway than I do as far as this is concerned. But, but I'm just listen, saying this. You, uh, 
if you go to the the what all the uh, cabins they say catch up, you can always catch up on the topics you need. exactly. If that's the whole point, right, but I'm not you never no losing any... stuff that I'm catching up on. Yes, of course you not. Of course, no, when no, you no, are, no. you're just not going to get full credit. I don't get because... anything. I've caught up. Yeah, but you learn the material. Okay. Now let me just okay. say this before we, we got to get to the material here. But in theory, you could just blow off doing the learning path. And that would only lose you 10%. Because I have a, a student last semester, they were very upset because they could not keep up with that learning path. And they went and talked to everybody. And uh, I think the boss told her, well, just concentrate. He's got reviews in there. Let's work on the reviews. Well, that lady... She went crazy and she just worked on the reviews and she aced all the rest of the tests and she made an 88 on the final exam by using the reviews. So I'm going to say it is because if just because you don't keep up with the learning path, it's not the end of the world. And I will end it there because I want to make sure we have enough time to do this without going. Uh, okay, getting... thank you. All right. All right. So. For multiplication, multiplication is what we do when we have and. So I'm just going to put right here. These two things. Let me see if I can back up a bit. So from 10.7, or means add. For 10.8, and means multiply. Hold on, I need to write that down. Well, I'm writing it in the notes. I'm writing it down for you. But you can write it down. All right. So 10.7, which we did last time, we were adding. Or means add. And that's consistent with what we did in chapter two and chapter three. Same thing with and. Now, here's the way it works. This is uh, this is the formula for the probability of A and B. You just take the probabilities separately and you multiply them. Now, if they're independent events, it's really pretty easy because you just find out these two things individually and multiply them. So, suppose we roll a dice twice, a die, a single die. What is the probability of getting a six and a three? Well, let me write out formulaically the probability of Okay, so that's all there is to. These are what we call independent because uh, rolling a die, those are independent events because what you roll on the first die doesn't affect the second die. We'll see in a bit when that changes. But these are what we call independent events. So what was the probability of getting one, a, a six on the die? What? There's only one six on there. Likewise, there's only one three. And remember, when we multiply fractions, we multiply numerator times numerator. So one times one is one. And the denominator, six times six, is 36. When we multiply two fractions, you automatically going to have a smaller fraction, okay? Just remember that. When you multiply a fraction times a fraction, you're getting a smaller fraction. And that makes sense intuitively because to get both of those things is harder than just getting one of them separately. Okay? So and means multiply. 
<clears throat> and means multiply. All right, let's try another one. All right. So I'm going to get rid of this. But I got it right there worked out. All right. So find the probability of rolling a five on a die and then flipping a coin and getting a tail. Now, these are independent, too, because the die and the tail do not affect one another. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put in the probability of five and tail. So there's a probability of five. Times the probability of tail. Okay. So, there's six sides on the die. We want to know the probability of a five. So, that is one-sixth, just like up here. That was two rolls of the die. This is a roll of a die and a flip of a coin. What's the probability of getting the tail on a, a coin? Two. Well, there's two one sides. Two. One to two. There's two sides of the coin, and there's only one tail. Like here, there's six uh, sides to the die. Only one of them is a five. Okay. So again, we're multiplying. So we multiply numerator times numerator. One times one is one. Six times two is 12. So one twelfth. See, and those, that one twelfth is smaller than the individual ones because that's the way it works. When you multiply one fraction, you get a smaller fraction. Well, you want to play one fraction times another fraction, you're going to have a smaller fraction. Because half of a half is a quarter. Works like that. And then you keep multiplying by a fraction, you get proportionally less each time. All right, now for dependent events. Now, what dependent events are, it means that the first event, like rolling a die, affects the second one. Now with dies, it doesn't happen. They're both always independent because uh, once you roll that die, the probability stays the same when you roll it the second time. All right, so dependent events. Now what I use here for my example is, uh, and see, I got this worked out up there, so I'm racing this. I'm just trying to keep us active. So what we're doing is we're looking at this one. All right. So what is the probability of picking both a jack and an ace without replacement? Now, the word at without replacement simply means like this. Okay, here's our cards. There's three, I'm sorry, four suits of 13. So there's 52 cards. So I want you to think about this. If I have that deck of cards and I've uh, shuffled it and I'm going to have two students pick, if I pick the first time and you keep the card, then when the second person picks, there's no longer 52 cards in the deck. There's 51. So that's what we call dependent events because that card comes out, then it changes the second pick. That's what we call dependent Okay, 
So, what is the probability of picking both a jack and an ace? And we're saying without replacement. So that means that when you pick that ace, there's 51 cards in there. Now, some of them will say with replacement, and if it's with replacement, then it goes back to what was up here. But without replacement specifically gives us the information we needed to know that it's a dependent event. That the second one is affected by the first one. All right. So, go back to this. So that'd be 50 over 52? All right. I'm sorry. I don't think so. I'm not sure what you're thinking about, but <laughs> it doesn't sound right. All right. How many jacks are there? Oh, four jacks. Four jacks. Four jacks. All right, so I'm going to type this out. The probability of Jack and Jack is equal to the probability of a Jack. And this is the way we write it like the uh, the probability of a Jack given, and that's what that little line means, that a Jack has been I'm sorry, an ace, it was, I'm sorry, it's not, it's ace, jack and ace. The second one is. So that's what this is up here. See how that second thing now is replaced with that? That just means the probability of B given that A is incurred, has, has occurred. So when we say the probability of a jack and an ace, then the first probability is just the probability of a jack. So the probability of a jack, I'm going to put it right here, is equal to 13 over 52. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and simplify it because when you're multiplying, the smaller numbers is going to make uh, it easier. So this is 1 over 13. So you got 13 jacks in a day. Not the last time I checked. There's just uh, four, right? Four. But what does 13 over 15 simplify to? Yeah, but wouldn't it be four over 52? Oh, I don't four, think so. Four, How are you going to get a four, four, four? 16 over 52? Because you got four jacks on each suit. Oh, I'm sorry. It was four. Why did I put 13 in there? <laughs> okay, thanks for here. I thought y'all were the crazy ones. It's me. <laughs> so the probability of a jack is 4 over 52. And then that simplifies down to 1 over 13. I will okay. get well, I mean, you can leave it as 4 over 52, but then you're going to have to simplify your fraction. Now, here, oh, that's right. see? Oh, okay, I got you. I'm with you. I'm each, with you. I'm with you. Each, one, each one of the suits has one jack. Each one of the right. 13 suits has one jack. Right. Now so, therefore, okay. okay. Now, what's the second one? Now, we got to realize now, Going back over here. All right. This card, one of these jacks is now gone. All right. I'm just going to say it's, it's that one. It doesn't matter which one because it's just jacks. So one of them is gone. So how many jacks are left? Three. All right. Now, for this one, it doesn't matter, but one card out of the 52 is now gone. One of the jacks. But that's not going to matter for us on this first one because this one 
there are still the second card is an a so that's four over 51. now i'm writing it as four over 51 because that one can't be simplified we can't simplify that down like we could this one but when you multiply you want to have them simplified because it'll make the math, uh, math easier so then we're going to multiply across so that's four and down here it's going to be 13 times 51 so 663 So that's 4 over 663. That's the exact answer because 4 doesn't divide into 663, so we can't simplify that. If you're asked to round it off, then, you know, you just do 4 divided by 663, and then you round it off to wherever. So, like, for three decimal places, it would just be 0 0.006. All right. Now, on B... It's going to be slightly different. We're still going to have 51 decks in the uh, cards in the deck for that second pick. But we also now we're talking about two jacks, not a jack and an ace. So this is going to affect the, the jacks as well. So watch this. Okay. Probability. Two jacks is equal to the probability of the jack times the probability of jack given jack. And that's just, I know it sounds funny, but that's what it means. It means given that the first card was a jack all right and that's important because we got to take this probability given the fact that now one of the jacks has gone from the deck so from this first part there are still one over 13 all right but now let's go back over here to the, look at that sample space So we're talking about jacks. So as I had said before, I probably shouldn't erase that one. This one's gone now. So we got 51 cards still, but now we only got three jacks because we got to pretend that one of them, the first one was a jack because we got to have two jacks. And the only way we're going to have two jacks is if the first one was a jack. All right. So now... It affects both numerator and denominator. So the denominator is still 51 because there's 51 cards. But now there are three jacks because here's the other one. It got out in the first pick. So now we multiply across just like the other times. So one times three is three. And 13 times, oh, it's 51. What is, what is I was about to say, I'm very confused, but never mind. <laughs> yeah, 51. Because I was talking about a three when I probably wrote it. Well, it's fixed now. See, that's the point. You got to realize Everybody makes mistakes. So, see, I ca uh, caught that because I went back. Because everybody does that kind of stuff. You write down something wrong. That oh, happens all the time. Me, it's not you. Oh, what I'm just saying is yeah. that's something that happens. To everything. That's why I'm not afraid You're to not make mistakes. So I'm going to come back and show you that I have to be self-correcting. So I don't hide my mistakes. 
I try to make this interactive and just how you would do it. All right. So now in the denominator, 13 times 51. So that's 663. Same thing. So now... This can be simplified because 3 will divide into 663. So 2 1. Yep. So this is going to be 1 over 2, 21. And uh, you can simplify it. 1 divided by 2, 2, 1. So it's now 0 0.004, I'm sorry, 0 0.005. So watch your rounding off because some of these things will change based upon, because you see that's a different probability now. This was 0 0.006, this is 0 0.005. See how that one little change affects it. Excuse me. All right. So any other questions about that? Like I said, I know I messed it up initially, but I usually catch most of my mistakes, and y'all catch the rest. All right. So now, let's expand this to the idea of conditional probability. Now, this is – dependent events are conditional – as I had said, that right there reads the probability of B given that A occurred over here. And that's what's happening here. The second pick was affected by the first pick in both cases, but in different ways. All right. So let's do one more of those. And then we'll... Uh, Look at it from a slightly different vantage point. All right. So in a class of 10 students, there are six humans and four lifelike robots. So how many students? It's 10. So that's our denominator. What is, if we pick two of them, what is the probability that both are robots? Well, Robot and robot is simply the probability of robot times the probability of robot given that the robot was picked on the first one. Because if we want to have both robots, one's got to get picked on the first. That's why it's dependent. So what's the probability of a robot? Four out of ten. Yeah. And I'm going to simplify it. So that's going to be four over ten, but I'm going to simplify it in the second part. Just to make the multiplication easier, because that's now two-fifths. When you're multiplying, it's good to, to simplify them first. When you're adding for the 10.7, keep the same denominator, and then you simplify once you add them. All right, so I'm going to put two-fifths here. You could put four-tenths, and if you're good at simplifying fractions using your calculator, then that's fine. But I'm doing it by hand. So now, what changes now if we picked one robot? What changes? You're picking one robot, and you're bringing it up in the front of the class. How many students are left? If there were 10 to begin with. Aren't there nine students left? If I pick one, doesn't matter whether it's a robot or a human. But in this case, one of them is coming out. So that denominator changes now. Now, since we have to have robot, robot, and we picked a robot the first time. Oh, wait a minute. I I see here. This is what I get for talking. 
which I can't avoid talking and working. So two fifths, because it meant to be that one up there. Now, one of them is gone. So four minus one is three. All right. And then we can also simplify this one. So it would be two over fifth, five times one third. And if you do it like this, if you simplify them beforehand, it won't be so hard to uh, reduce once you multiply it. So this is now going to be 2 over 15. And there's no, there's no uh, common factor between there. So generally, when you have your uh, these simplifying, then when you multiply, you're not going to have to worry about simplifying them. But... If you're good with that, Alex, I mean, that uh, TI calculator, it does simplify the fractions. I can kind of show you uh, a YouTube video, or you can go out and Google YouTube. Like, for example, um, put in there the TI, whatever it is, 30X, 2S, and uh, put in simplify fraction. If you do that, you'll get videos, and you pick the one that you want to show you how to do it. That's the best way for this class because I don't have a virtual calculator that's TI. All right. All right. So let's um, remember about the uh, complement rule. We looked at it again last time. I'm just going to re uh, remind you again about this because Remember over in um, when we used it for odds and all that, it's the probability of, of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of not A. Well, over here, we can use it in this way, that the probability of an event occurring at least once is 1 minus the probability that it does not happen. None, in other words. So, again, to use it briefly here before we get to the last stuff. When we were looking at all these trees, there was a pattern. But here's the sample space for rolling, uh, oh, I'm sorry, flipping a coin twice. You can either get two heads, you can get a uh, head tail, you can get tail head, and then tail tail. So... If we want to find the probability of getting at least once a head, then we got to find the probability of no heads. What's the probability of no heads or all tails? Yeah, look at this right here. There's only one out of them that's no heads. One. So this is one minus one quarter, which is three quarters. And you can see, and this is easier to do when you don't have the sample space in front of you to use the complement rule. All right. But I just want to try to build your confidence in the complement rule because it's important. See, all of these right here. They have at least one head. See, there's two heads. There's another head. That's got one head. That's got one head. So this is the no heads. So one minus that one out of the four leaves us with these three over four. And it doesn't matter how many times you flip that coin. You can see on the bottom one there that it still works. You will always, in this case, when you're talking about that coin, flip uh we looked at those sample spaces there was one at the top and one at the bottom the one at the top was like all heads and the bottom one at the bottom was all tails so there's one exactly out of the eight because when you flip a coin three times you're going to have eight so it works for that too so again i just wanted to make sure that you realize that this complement rule can shorten the path 
because it's a lot easier to find none than it is to find at least, usually. All right, so here's the rules that we've got so far. There's the complement rule, which is what we just used. We just uh, It's just worded slightly different when we got none and when we got at least one. If we've got dependent events, the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given that A has occurred. That's like with the two cards thing, not replacing them. If they're independent events, then that means that the second one isn't affected, so you don't have to do anything to that second. So you just multiply them. Now, remember for or, there's, I want to like to look at the one formula. And that's this one. Because if we have mutually exclusive events, then this part right here is zero. All right. It means you're subtracting everything out. That's what the gist of 10.7 is about. That if they're mutually exclusive, given this right here, this is what's telling us that, then this right here is going to be zero. But if they're overlap, like for, say, diamonds and aces, in order to find the probability of a diamond or an ace, you, multi you add the probability of the diamond, the probability of the ace, and you subtract out the probability of both. All right? So that's those rules right there. Now, there's going to be some questions in Alex that relate back to this right here that I have outlined, okay? So remember that because that's telling you what you need to know to answer some of those questions. It's really the same thing as what was up there, but it's kind of written out in the Alex way there and like i said we're going to have two days to review uh, next tuesday and then um uh, the next tuesday after that because next Maybe thursday we're open oh. up when we finish i'm sorry we're cutting you off Mr. Crew. I got that. what was the question so we do the review open up uh next week if you want it earlier i'll be glad to do it just let yeah, me know in a few me. minutes Remind me, remind me, because I generally, by default, I do them a week ahead of time, because usually that uh, gives you enough time to have completed the uh, the past stuff. All right. Now, conditional probability, it's really just what we've been doing. It's just that co uh, conditional probability is broader, but it's basically the same thing. The probability of B, given that, a has occurred. All right. Now there's a formula for it, and it's basically this. And I got it backwards right here. If I could figure out how to edit that real quick, I should have. Uh, it, it's. I'll show you in a second what I'm talking about. I just realized that today that this one is. It should be B slash A. And then the A should be down there. But it works that way, too. It's just that some people use it differently. And I wrote it in wrong when I made these. All right. So what this relates to is in the denominator, whatever follows the given word or that little line, which means given, is going to be in the denominator. Because the given is the condition. All right. So back in two, two, when it says, if you do this, then you get this. All right. That was the condition. If you do this. So here, the if is if B. So that goes in the denominator. Now, this is the one time now when we start having a different denominator than the total, see, with this conditional probability. So we got to be careful. And in the numerator is the probability of both of these events occurring, whatever they are. All right. You can do it when you got a chart like this, 
you don't have to put it in the full probability. You could just put the counts, and I'll sh uh, and so either way will work. But this is the safe one here. All right, so let's look. Here's a nice little chart. And when you see these little charts like this, it's probably an indication that you're going to get some conditional probability. Not always, because we did have a couple of charts earlier on, but it wasn't uh, conditional. But All right. So we've got this little chart. It talks about the number of times stu students visited the tutoring lab. And it's got it broken down in rows as full-time students and part-time students. And then the last row is totals of the columns. And then the columns are one or fewer visits. And the middle column is two to three visits. And the third column is four or more. And you notice that going across, we're totaling that way too. And this number right here, this number right here is the total of both. 45 and 13 add up to 58. 14, 14 and 30 add up to 58. So that's the total number of students. So for a basic probability, which this first one is, take that Ooh. answer So here's our, uh, how we're going to set up this probability. Find the probability that a part-time student visited the lab. Well, first thing is we need to have our denominator. And this is not conditional probability. This is just basic probability, like something you're doing before. So that's going to be our denominator. All right. Now, we need to find part-time students. So part-time students are right here. So the probability of part time is 13 over 58. 13 over 58. And then if it's uh, asking you to round it off, you know, to a certain depth, then you got to do the calculator. So um, 13 divided by 58. And let's say we round off to, uh, to the third one, then that would be 0 0.224. third decimal place. That's the uh, tens, hundreds, thousands. All right. Now, here's where we get our conditional stuff. To show the contrast. <laughs> Using this same chart, we want to find the probability now we want to find the probability that a student visited four times or more, four times or more, in this right here, given they were full-time. So the given is the denominator. Remember back over here on this? What follows the little line, the given, that little line means given. So if it's written out, was the word given, but if it's a line, you imply that it's given. That goes in the denominator. So now, so let's go up here. So now, our given is full time, so we're no longer looking at the 58. The denominator is changing. And what it's changing to is full time now. The total of full time is 45. 
So that's going to be our denominator. All right. 45. I'll put it together in a minute. Now, four or more times, and I should have rolled it up before I made that. Four or more times. And I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just do everything that's full time. So this is the total of full time. But I'm only looking at that row because what the condition means is I'm only going to look at full time students. That's the given. That's the if. If they're full time, then how many visited four or more times? Well, Eight. exactly. So then our fraction is then eight over 45. So this is the probability, and I'm going to write it out here. Even though I had it, uh, I was going to do it down there, but I'll put it up here. So four plus four plus that's four more given full time is equal to that right there. All right. Cause this right here tells us the denominator. The whole column is 45. That's why it's down there. And the one where it intersects full time with four more is the eight, and that's the numerator. All right, now let's say we make one slight change, and we're going to use that same table. And now I'm going to copy this and put it up there for the uh, for a bit. So this is the question I'm going to answer now, just so I can we can still be looking at the table. All right. So let's erase this, because now there's something different. Can you tell what's different about this one than the other one? The other one was um, four or more times, given they were full time. What's changed now? I'll show you. It's the probability of full time now given four plus. And this is going to make a difference. The order changed. It's going to make a difference. And watch what difference it's going to make. Now we're not looking at that row. We're looking at the column of four more because now what follows the little given line is four plus all right so now that denominator is different 14. it's 14 now all right so i'm gonna put that there Okay, now they still meet at the same place, even though they're turned around, the denominator changes. But even though they're turned around, that numerator is still hey. this radical. But that's a different probability when you do turn them around because it changes that denominator. The given is always what goes down in the denominator, and that's the only group of data you're looking at, whether it's a row or a column kind of thing. All right, let's do one more visually and we'll be done. Um, these, this is just to show you that all probability doesn't have to be about gaming and stuff, but sometimes the gaming stuff uh, is easier to visualize. 
So this next one's going to be kind of a, a spin the wheel of fortune kind of thing. All right. All right. So this first one right here is the probability of blue given that it's even. So we're looking at that wheel of fortune. So if we spin that, and we're only looking at even numbers now, because that's what follows the line. The, oops. Following the six. So this is an even number. This is an even number. This is an even number. And this is an even number. So what's the, how many are those that are even? Four. Yeah. So that's our denominator. We're just counting them. Now, out of those that are circled, how many are blue? Three. Out of those that are circled, how many are blue? Two. That one. And that one. Oh, the two even numbers. Okay. Yeah, that's what it is. Out of, those out of those that are even, how many are blue? In other words, how many are both even and blue? Right. So then this is one half. Okay. Tired. All right. Now the next one is find the probability of odd given the color blue. So, I'm going to write here, probability of, let me see if I can make it a different color. Two, three, five, one, two, three, four. Given blue. See, the blue is now in a different spot, so this is going to be different. Now the blue is the given. So, I'm going to go back up here and erase. All right, so I'm going to only look at the blue ones now. And uh, what should I do to Three, four, five. circle that? Three, four, five. So I'm only looking at these now. Because hmm. there's my given. That's my condition. Oops, I messed it up. There we go. It's uh, right here. So there's my condition, the blue. So the other ones don't matter now. So our denominator is three. So our denominator is three now. So last question. Out of those that are blue, the ones that are circled or outlined, how many of those are odd? One. This one. Oh, hell, you can get this. All right, so that's it uh, for the night and finishing up the chapter. Have a good weekend, but please bring back questions on uh, Tuesday, okay? Short week. You open up the review? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank I'll you. do that right now. If you got anything else, you can stick around. Good weekend. Have okay. A nice one. Good night. Bye-bye. Yeah, see y'all Tuesday. Have, Have a night. great one, Mr. Cruz. Bye bye, Emily. Bye bye. It's got unlimited attempts. 
Same amount. Uh, let's see. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm opening it up early. That's right. So I just need to change it to uh, today. And that should do it. Thank you. Oh, and it should be. Uh, this should be um, 530, uh, 7, 7 p.m. Okay. Okay. See you Tuesday. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Right. So, Anidra, do you have a question? Or are you uh, having fun just hanging out there? All right. I'm going to uh, end the class then. I got to get something to eat. Well, we still got a couple of minutes. <laughs>